morning, everybody. It's good to see all of you here. It's amazing times that we have around us. So a lot going on. We we huddled last yesterday morning as a church. We didn't even know if we could have church. Thanks to Thompson Valley, they uh, let us here. And uh, since we're a church in a box, we take church and put it in a box, and then we haul it away. Uh, uh, Larry and Gail Ryder are uh, fortunate, blessed enough to. Um, Bless us enough to let us park our trailer there. That's our church where it is during the week. So if you want to know our foundation, it's, it's in a box on Larry and Gail Ryder's property. Uh, while the river was rising high, uh, their property was jeopardy. So I think it was Steve Roskamp sitting right there that texted Fortress yesterday. Did you not? And said, oh, the water's getting there. We had to get our truck out of there. We want to save Larry and Gail because the water's getting close. So yesterday, I don't know. How many guys were there, Steve? 25 guys, there's the water, and they started loading sandbags up, and um, they started sandbagging, and um, so uh, I see Gail, Gail's there, some, where's Larry and Gail, right over there, you guys are doing all right, right? Okay, and so there's the guys working, how come you didn't text me, because I, I could do like the work of five guys there, <laughs> Steve, I was disappointed you didn't text me, uh, but there's our guys sandbagging, so we're here, thanks to, uh, thanks to, um, Thompson Valley and many people who made it happen. So we're, we're here in church this morning, so we're grateful for that. It's amazing times that we're living in, amazing times. Arnie's sitting right there, a good friend of mine. Uh, he just told me this morning how grieved he is. Uh, one of his great friends uh, lives in Cedar Grove. Uh, uh, I read about her this morning in the paper. Uh, she lost her life, her house and her got swept away in the flood. So. Um, uh, hard times for, for a lot of people, and we want to be really, really uh, sensitive not only to that, but we also want to be a church and a bright light during dark times. So we're, we're, uh, we're trying to network with a lot of people, and so if you want to help or be part of any of that, there's things in the lobby you can talk, just sign up for some stuff uh, today, but keep uh, a post to our website, because as we line up stuff with Convoy of Hope and other organizations that are on the front lines of helping people, um, there's going to be uh, lots of opportunities for us as a church to really be able to provide a lot of things for a lot of people. Uh, some people left their church last night, went out to eat, and there's uh, we have a guy who owns a restaurant, and he's finding out about stuff, so he's donating a lot of food to people. Just, he's got meals already planned and stuff. So if you want to help part, be part of that, there's going to be uh, tons of opportunities um, to be able to do that. So. Um, Keep in touch with our website or call the church office this week. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're safe. And uh, so we want to, uh, I was thinking about this. Um, uh, well, what do you do when times are tough? Um, and uh, I was thinking as a little boy, my, my dad's father, he passed away. Uh, my dad's mother, I mean, passed away when she was giving birth to my dad. And so his aunt raised him and she became kind of our grandmother. She was like the perfect grandmother. She was perfect. She lived with us for a while. And when and my house was always tumultuous. Dad was drinking a lot and yelling and screaming. And whenever life got tough, my Aunt Chloe would gather me in her arms, hug me, and she would sing this song. She would say, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. You could join me, because I don't like singing a solo. When skies are gray, you'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine. I can't sing it without crying. I can't tell you guys had to join me. Just because that song brought me so much comfort. Because when I felt my world was falling apart, it was in the arms of my Aunt Chloe, having her sing that song that brought some sense of hope. Does that make sense? When my kids, uh, when things get a little scary for them, uh, sometimes I'll uh, jump in bed and I'll gather in my arms, and I'm not going to sing this song. We're going to sing it on Easter. I already decided that on Easter. But some of you know the song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone. Because I know He holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. That's the song that I of comfort that I, songs bring great comfort. Yesterday after church, as the kids were in the car, it was raining, we were talking about things, and all of a sudden, I don't know, I had the radio on, and then all of a sudden, Eye of the Tiger came on by Survivor. You know that song? And my son, my son who's only nine years old, says, Dad! He says, 
when I get my cell phone, it's like, dude, you're like 10 years away from that, all right? He goes, when I get my cell phone, that's the ringer on my phone. It's like, what? That's my favorite. It's like, where'd you hear that? I hear it all over. It's like, all right, whatever floats your boat. So I was thinking uh, last night as rain was coming down and thinking this morning, uh, what do we do when times are tough? And so I'm, I changed my message this morning. I got it this morning. I said, I just want to talk to you about a song. A song. Uh, three times a year, Jewish men had to make the journey to Jerusalem for religious festivals. They had to travel over the hills and then go down to Jerusalem, and that's where they would do it three times a year. It was, tra it was, a, it was, a, tra it was a traveling time. Because when they had to travel through the hills, the hills were, were places where, where difficult people lived, marauders, all kinds of things. They had to leave their wife and children at home, scared that. And so in the Psalms, David has a whole section of Psalms he calls Psalms of Ascent. These are songs that the Jewish men sang when they were on their way to Jerusalem. Are you all track with me this morning? These are songs they sing to give them comfort as they left their family very vulnerable and as they were in the high places wondering what's going to happen to them. So today we're going to go real fast, talk a little song that the Jewish nation used to comfort them during times of uncertainty. I thought it would be appropriate for us to learn this song. So let's all stand together and I'm going to read this song to you. You all know it. You've heard this. And I'm just going to talk to you for a little bit and then we'll go home and stay dry. Listen to this. Here's the song that they would sing as they're journeying over the mountains. I lift my high, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where, where does my help come from? That, 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 that's a question of scare. We're walking through the mountains. That's where the, 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 the bandits live. The high places in the Bible are, are places where there was idol worship. So, so I lift my eyes. Oh, oh man, we have to travel. Where, where, where's my help going to come from? And they're singing this. And, 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 and David says in Psalms, My help comes from the Lord who makes the heavens and the earth. He's not going to let your foot slip. He who watches over you, he never falls asleep. Indeed, he watches over all of Israel. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor will the moon harm you at night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going. Now and forevermore. It's a great thing to hold on to. Father, we thank you. In times of uncertainty when <laughs> our whole world can be jeopardized so quickly, uh, what, what can be spent a lifetime worth building can be lost in an instant. A life that sometimes we just take for granted. We think we just have another 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Our lives can be snuffed out in an instant. We recognize today the frailty of life. But in our frailty, we also recognize the power of who you are. And so today we pray this community, Foundations Church, joins hands with other communities of faith. And we plead and we pray for our state. We suffer with other Coloradoans who have lost everything. Some of them are in deep, deep, deep grief today. Some of them have lost loved ones. We pray that your comfort would be real to them. Some of them have lost everything. Some of them still have unaccounted loved ones, have no idea where they're at. We know, Father, as a faith community, that when it's darkest, it gives great opportunity for the light to shine ever more brightly. So we pray for our community. We pray that you would bring the rains to a halt. We pray for all the first responders, all the way to people who are taking care of people in shelters, restaurant owners who are donating food, people who are opening up their homes. We pray for everybody in this recovery process that in this time, Father, you would show yourself strong. We as a faith community stand on the promise that the Apostle Paul says that all things, and we know not all things are good, but we believe what the Apostle Paul says, that you're a God who can make all things work together for good. And so, Father, we pray for our community, for our state today. 
may you work all this out, all this tragedy and difficulty, somehow, beyond our understanding, Father, that you would make all this work together for good, and in and through this, your name would be on. Father, help us as a church be the hands and feet and the heart of Jesus to people who desperately need it. And may we rise to the occasion, Father, and may people see um, us reaching out in love and care and support. And may we join hands with many, many others and rebuild our stake in our community so that we can be even stronger after this tragedy and before it. Father, may your work be done in a powerful way. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before you grab a seat, shake people's hands and just say, uh, everything's going to be all right. Just tell, just tell people that today. <laughs> Glad to have the kids here this morning. Welcome to everybody. Glad you're here. We're going to move very fast this morning. Here's three things I want you to take away this morning. As these Jewish people are making their journey to Jerusalem, they have to go through those treacherous hills. They ask this question. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. We could be saying, I lift my eyes up to the floods today. And where, where, where does our help come from? In times when we understand that we're pretty frail and that, that, that the forces of life are not strong, that's where does our help come from? And, and so there's three kinds of, from that question, there's three answers that David gives us in the song that they were singing as they journeyed through some. Number one, we can rely on God's personal care in your life. Here's what he says. He says, my help, my help, my help, say my help. Today, I want you to know, no matter what you're trying, may, 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 maybe this tragedy has not even touched you at all, but I, I, I know this, that everybody here, everybody here today is in some kind of trouble. And you know how I know that? It's because we're all human beings. We all need help in some way. And, and, and so David, as he's making this journey over to Jerusalem with all the other Jewish men, they're singing a song, I left my, where, where, where did our help come from? And David says, my help. My help. Say my help. My help comes from the Lord. Here's what I want everyone to know today. No matter where you go in life, no matter what daunting problems you have, no matter what uncertainty you face, it can be money, life, health, all kinds of relationship issues, I want you to know today that we serve a God who guarantees his help to you personally. You got that? Personally. He knows you personally. The very hairs of your head are numbered. For some of us, that's not too challenging to God, okay? For others it is, but here's how he knows. It's a fascinating, mind-boggling thought that God knows every issue, concern, challenge you face. My help comes from the Lord. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Does that make sense? He knows what your struggles are, your insecurities, your challenges, where you're vulnerable in temptation. He knows all of that. And David wants everybody to know today, in uncertain times, as you're walking through life, my help, my help comes from the Lord. Personal help. Say, my help. God is your personal help in times of trouble. He is always there. Whether you realize it or not, my help comes from the Lord. God's care is very personal. If you got to say, got it. Good. Number two. Number two. He has providential care. Watch this. He's not, he's now he's talking to the nation of Israel. Now he's talking to us in Colorado. He says this. He, he's not going to let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. He is directly addressing idol worships or other gods who sometimes had to wake and sometimes if you know other faith they'll clap their hands real loud they'll do stuff to wake god up wake up hey hey, hey. you forgot us down here wake up we may be thinking in times like this that god has turned his back or he's too preoccupied or he's sleeping or he's not engaged and David is saying, I want you to know this, God is providential. He is sovereign over everything. You with me this morning? Everything. 
He's sovereign over the mountains. He's sovereign over the water. He's sovereign over everything. We can count on the fact that we can walk through this world as scary it is, not knowing all the things we need to know, but we don't need to worry about it because our God is sitting on the throne, providentially caring about everything. Nothing comes to us that doesn't pass through the filter of God's loving and caring hands. Today, we need to remind ourselves and we need to remind our community that God is in control. You got that? God is in control. So we have my help, then we have his help. Say his help. His help. Providential care. Personal care, providential care, and then he gives us protective care. Here's what he says. Here's what he says. Okay, the Lord watches over you. Now these people are making this long journey to Jerusalem. And he says, the shade is at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day. That's important. If you've ever been to Israel, I haven't, but I've had friends who have. They say that sun can be scorching. So he says, even though the sun's there, God, even though it's a scorching sun, it can be an oppressive sun, God will provide his shade. He'll protect you. It's, 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 it's his protective care. He's watching over you. And then he says this. He says, Lord, watch over you by day, and nor will the moon harm you at night. Here's, uh, he's addressing a superstitious belief. The word for moon in Latin is luna. We get our word <laughs> lunatic. Okay? So did you ever hear people say, people get weird around the full moon stuff. You ever hear that stuff? I heard the full moon's weird, weird. And I don't understand all the polls on stuff and stuff like that. Um, but, 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 uh, but, but there is this, this superstitious belief that when the moon is out, people get a little lunatic-y. Okay? And so, and so he, Paul, I mean, it's not Paul, David, King David, who wrote this, is addressing and saying, look, look, when the sun is out by day and you're fearful of him just scorching you to death, he will be your shade. He'll take care of you. And at night, when the moon is out and the crazies are out there, don't worry, I will protect you. So you got personal care, you got providential care, and you got God's protective care. In this world, there's a lot of scary things. We're seeing it today. A lot of scary things. But don't worry, God's protective care will be with us. Everybody with me this morning? That's the message we have to embrace today, and we have to let other people know. That while things seem scary, we can't control a lot of stuff. That we have a God who's still sitting on the throne, providing his comfort and his care to people. We have to receive it, and we have to give it to other people. You got that? Okay, so that's our message today. All right? So I'm going to have you stand. I'm going to have you stand right now. The band's going to come out. They're going to sing a song for us. Okay? To remind us of God's protective care. And I want to close with this about the power of God. During the time of the Cold War, when Russia and America were really, 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 there was the hostilities were at an all-time high. Uh, the, the, the leader of Russia was Brezhnev. Some of you may remember Brezhnev. And the president of our country was uh, George Bush Sr. And, and, uh, and, and Mrs. Brez, um, Leonard Brezhnev, the leader of Russia, he passed away. He died. And uh, President Bush was invited to his funeral in Moscow. And so he attended when hostilities were at an all-time high between our two countries. And he stood there watching as people were passing by the great leader of Russia, Brezhnev. They were walking by, and everybody was done, and it was by the Kremlin wall there. And the last person to view the body before they would close the casket was his wife, Mrs. Brezhnev. Mrs. Brezhnev, all the communist dignitaries were around. Mrs. Brezhnev came and looked at her husband. The cameras were there. The communist party was there. And the last thing she did before she walked away from the body is make the sign of the cross. Here's what President Bush said. I was amazed in her silent way she was reaching out to God no matter what anybody else thought. 
And I said to myself, all the barbed wire and all the indoctrination classes in the world can't keep God out. Isn't that powerful? I'm going to close real quickly with an illustration from the Old Testament. And then we're going to close in a weird way today that you've never done before in a Protestant church and then they'll sing and then we'll be done. God has his hand on his people. He promises his comfort to his people. And he does it in his way. When Israel was marching through the wilderness, they would stand in a tabernacle, a little tabernacle, smaller than the, this place where they held the presence of God. How many tribes were there in Israel? Anybody know? Twelve. So here's what they did. Since there were four sides of the tabernacle, they would have three tribes here, three tribes here, three tribes here, three tribes here. Y'all tracking with me? Now, because the tribes were big and the tent was so small, people think there were three tribes on this side, three tribes, and there were. But the three tribes can't fit this way horizontally on, on a small building. So they camp side next to each other. Y'all with me? Here's one tribe, here's one tribe, here's one tribe. On this side, one tribe, one tribe, one tribe. On this side, one tribe, one tribe, one tribe. On this side, one tribe, one tribe, one tribe. Now, the, the ungodly people hated him, so they hired this prophet, Balaam, to call curses on God's people. So Balaam went up to a mountain, and he looked down on the people of Israel, and if they were shaped that way, when he looked down on Israel, what were they shaped in? The cross. Y'all will track him. And they hired Balaam to curse God's people. And Balaam looked down on the cross, and here's what he said. I can't curse, but God is blessed. This is, oh, you got a wrong angle. You got a wrong angle. So they took up to another mountain because they were in a valley camping. And so looked down, there was God's people shaped in a... And they go, we're paying you, curse them. And Balaam said, I, uh, I, I can't, I can't, I can't curse. But God is blessed. That's pretty cool. We are the hands and feet of God scattered across northern Colorado to be salt and light to a community that desperately needs it. To provide hope, encouragement, comfort to our community that needs it now more than it's needed in a long, 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 long time. So I want you to know as we sing our song and we're dispersed this afternoon, you go be God's people. You go be God's people to a, to a community that desperately needs hope and encouragement and comfort. Does that make sense? Going in this spirit, that God, because people say, what's going on? What's going on here? What's happening? I just want you to know that, that, that God cannot, nothing can curse what God has blessed. And you have the mark of Christ on you. So we're going to do something today that you've never done in a Protestant church before. We're going to close reminding ourselves that we are God's ambassadors to this community. And we're going to make the sign of the cross on ourselves to remind us that Christ is with us. And nothing can curse what God has blessed. Are you okay with that? Because when God sees his people, that's where his comfort and his blessing goes. So I want you to join me this morning in crossing ourselves, reminding that we are bearers of the comfort of Christ. Shall we? Someone's saying, wow, those Protestants have lost their minds. <laughs> A reminder that nothing can curse what God has blessed. Let's worship with the band.